Sponsored by the Dunleary Ratdown Local Enterprise Office. You're listening to Business Eye with Joe Dalton and Simon Haig. And welcome to Business Eye. Simon can't be with us today. He's on a Zoom call working from home. It is a strange, strange couple of weeks. Uh, I feel that uh, a lot of people are suffering, but I also see the goodness in a lot of people. There's some amazing, amazing things happening out there within the community. Okay, we are isolated. We're living, we're, we're learning to live apart so we can, so we can move on. Um, but it's, look, there is, there is so many good things going on out there as well. I know that living at home, uh, living at home with your partner and your kids and all in the same house as we do this with everything else is closed. Some people may find it challenging, but you, everybody has to get on with everybody. And look, it's, this will pass. We keep saying this will pass. Maybe it's going to be for the month of April. And then after the month of April, we'll all come out of hibernation. And the good news is we're all in this together. This is like a level playing field, like everything has ceased. Everything has slowed down. It gets its time to reflect on who we are and what we are doing and maybe make those adjustments as we move forward. And moving forward is what we're doing. We're a great nation. We're a nation of rolling up our sleeves and getting on. Um, there's going to be a lot of entrepreneurial spirit coming out of this. And then from there, we will, we will grow and we will develop. My next guest is Charlie Boyle. Charlie Boyle is um, an experienced customer service uh, leader uh, based in Donegal with many, many years of experience. Charlie, how are you? Yeah, keeping well and in, in, in spite of all that's happening, I suppose, just... Uh powerless over a lot of the things that that are happening as as, as the whole world and, and just trying to focus on you know the next day because it's changing by the day and just trying to keep as positive as humanly possible yeah like i, I i'm up in dundrum shopping center here as you know where the studio is and i i walked into the shopping center and it's eerie really really eerie all the shops are closed you know tesco's is open a couple of the chemists but everything else is is closed down it's a strange time that we're living in at the moment. You know, hopefully this is going to be only for a very, very short time. I think one of the benefits from a lot of, from what a lot of people are saying, everyone's in the same boat. What is the feeling or the, the, the attitude of the companies that you're speaking to at the moment? Yeah, it's, uh, Ironic that you're in Dundrum Town Centre because, you know, a good friend of mine, where we've done a bit of study together, Connor McDade is actually the operations manager there. And I was talking to Connor since this crisis emerged. Most people are saying exactly what you said is that the difference, I suppose, with this and, and other crises or, you know, even with businesses in the past struggling, it, it might have been a certain sector that was struggling or a certain maybe individual, maybe, you know, or a company that might have been struggling and, that you know that sense of of isolation can be can be immense when when you feel that maybe things are not going well for you or in your sector, but with this it's just global and everybody is impacted or is going to be impacted in some way or another, and what that it it gives us it gives this sense of on one hand powerlessness that what could we have done about this very little. Uh, and then on the other hand, it gives a sense of the rules of engagement for business are going to have to be reset. You know, things like rental, uh, repayments, uh, giving people breaks, you know, the, the whole rule book or what's traditionally happened in the past when businesses have got into difficulty, everything's going to have to be reset and revised. And, you know, that I suppose is the, the main focus at the minute. I mean, work-wise for, for myself, like most businesses, it's been hugely affected in those first three or four days. 
And I don't think you look ahead to see, okay, what can I do first? Because a lot of the companies that I would have been in contact with very early on, they just went straight into crisis management and you have to let them, you know, you have to let them manage that crisis first of all. You know, these were maybe company directors that were going to have to face 100 or 150 people and tell them that they were laying them off. So the last thing you wanted to do was talk about solutions of trading. That will come. That will come down the road. I believe that. You know, I believe we will recover from this, be it two months, three months, or whatever period of time it is. But in the meantime, it's uh, it's about being pragmatic and being as practical as possible and getting over that initial shock. And, and I suppose, again, supporting people, because there's a very human element to this, of course, is that, you know, supporting people that maybe you had worked with over the last few years, maybe just call them to see how they're doing. You know, nothing to do with business, but just sort of checking in because uh, everybody's suffering in some way or another, Joe. Yeah, I think compassion is very important now and it is about picking up the phone and talking to people and like I've, out of this I've seen some amazing things really and truly I've seen people go above and beyond in the community we know that people are scared and people are keeping their distance and I think when when this does end you know someone said to me the other day we'll probably need a full health check before we get on a flight you know, who, who, who knows where it's going, but yeah. w- like, would you say there has been a lot of companies sort of have crisis management, you know, files locked in a drawer that if something ever happens like this, they know how to act or is this just something to a lot of them going, oh my God, what do I do now? Yeah, I, I would, I would say very few companies would have had any crisis management, um, procedure in place for something like this here certainly uh we we could imagine you know crisis that we've had in the past you know downturn of the economy you know maybe something seriously happening uh with within their particular sector that would that would create a crisis where, where where there would be a total shutdown but i can't imagine anybody having predicted this because of course if there was prediction of it I'm sure the scientists and the the medical people would have been ahead of that as they normally are in other, you know, with other um, medical things that we've seen in the past. So I, I would, I would say no to that from experience and from talking to people over the last couple of weeks. Certainly not. Uh, and you know, it's just on a scale that, as you rightly say, none of us could have imagined or expected us, but be that as it may, um, I, and this is only a personal, you know, a personal view, um, you know, I haven't spoken to an awful lot of people about this, but, I, you know, I, I personally think we're being led quite well through this. I know there's criticism of certain things not happening quick enough, but then if you take, you know, you take the HSE or the government and, and the medical people and those that are responsible for helping us through this, it's very hard to make a quick decision on a lot of the, the, the issues that are happening. You know, and they have to sort of possibly stall for a couple of days to make sure, okay, we've got we've got one or two options here, which one is best for the, the situation we're in. And then country by country, you know, it's Ireland's country of five million population and in, in total, I suppose, we have to deal with it different than maybe the UK does. And then there could be criticism that we're not doing the same as maybe another country is doing. But I think overall, the feeling I get, I don't know if you agree, but feeling I get is that we're being reasonably well led through this yeah. and that gives us a certain degree of confidence as well I would agree that a lot of people are saying that you know the the government are playing a stormer here they're they're really stepping up to the mark and it's what people need now as well they need strong leaders you know there is criticism from different leaders around the world but we seem to here in Ireland kind of go maybe we have this maybe we have this and the the Irish are great you know we've lived through you know our ancestors have lived through many many unfortunate disasters uh, we, you could go back as far as the famine you can go back as you know the 1980s when everyone had to leave here um, you know and then we had it again the recession you know in the Celtic Tiger and I think you, a lot of people are kind of going okay this is bad 
And there will be the, the, as I say before, you have the excitement and then the anger and then there'll be stillness and there'll be a lot of resentment will go through. People will, will process a lot of resentment and then there'll be calmness. But, you know, we're an entrepreneurial country and there's people already going, OK, how can I readjust my business so when this finishes, I can hit the ground running? Um, and I and. There's some people business will close and never open because they'll have given up the fight. And there's other people out there will will go, OK, I'm ready to continue on and I'm going to drive. I'm going to do what I can do now and drive the business forward when this happens as well. So I think I think as 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 a nation. I think we'll we'll do all right at the end of this. We'll, we'll be, as I say to people, we'll be a beacon of light in a world of madness. That's right, and, and and I suppose just the original point you made there, the the overseas help or the diaspora and the greater the greater Irish community. You know, yeah. I've experienced that in the last few days. Of, of four lads, four sons that are overseas: Boston, New York, Dubai, and Sydney. And you know, when all of those places, um, Sydney and New York in particular, and that's not to say that there isn't you know work done the other places, but. Uh, Sydney and New York, the Irish communities there, there was a programme on Nationwide last night just showing what the Irish community, the Irish Centre in New York are doing to help those that are, you know, that are in New York and, and possibly suddenly out of work and, you know, that sort of sense. And it goes right back to, you know, how we've, how we've dealt with, you know, crisis, as you say, rightly say, right back to the famine or mass immigration, whatever it may be. We tend to be, Really, really good at looking after our own overseas, and and yeah, there's there's a repatriation sort of situation there where, where young people are trying to get back from from Australia, and that that's not easy um, logistically to deal with. But I'm sure you know the government are going to come up with something, and they're they're working. We know they're working at at, at you know looking at at options there, and it's not as simple as getting a plane to fly from. Sydney back to Ireland because you have to stop off and those stop off zones seem to have been closed down. So there's working on behind the scenes there. But oh, there's a lot and I agree on. with you on the, on, the, on the second part of your your observation there as well is that yeah, businesses will there, there there will be people who will go out of business. There's no question about that. But perhaps those businesses at that stage were were in need of of change. I don't know. You know, yeah. it will create opportunities. Um, you know, failure is not the end of the world. Failure is, is, is part of success. And, you know, if those businesses don't recover, does it give those businesses the opportunity to look at something else? I mean, I, I think the whole face of, of work is going to change as well because people people are working remotely. I would say, what, 80%, 90% of people I've been in contact with in the last week or so are working from home. And if that shows itself to be relatively successful, why then would we start to go back into cities when this is all over and done with? I know the temptation will be you must get back to work in three months' time, but it will ask it, it will ask the question, of, you know, about remote working. And remote working hasn't just started in the last two weeks. Remote working has been going on very successfully for years. And it's funny we were we were doing some work with a project where Grow Remote, an organisation called Grow Remote, and that was going on about you know three months ago before this had our island and I, I think the face the face of work and where we work and how we work could change dramatically and that could create huge opportunities for a country like Ireland and especially rural areas like where I am in Donegal where there's great examples of people who are you know servicing companies that are based in Dubai and and in the states from uh, you know rural settings so you know I, I would say that it's going to have a a positive. Everything that has a negative also has a has a positive as well. And I think a lot of positives will come out of this. But of course, we must be pragmatic and practical and and face the the coming weeks first and do everything that we're we're being asked to do uh, in terms of the, the health and safety advice yeah. that we've been given and, and try and you know flatten this curve as the term is used and then you know look at look at those opportunities further on. Like thank thank God for technology. 
you know it's Absolutely. Yeah. someone someone this morning saying they're going on to zoom and they said they think zoom is bursting at the seams that it's slowing you know there's just so many people jumping on it and i said yeah there'll, there'll be new companies setting up you know the the communications yeah. it's, it's yeah i was just driving i i had i had need to it was a necessary journey uh Yesterday morning, I was I was taking somebody to an appointment in the hospital, not related to the virus, but it was an appointment nonetheless that uh, the doctors wanted the person in for. And and on driving there, and again, you know, in West Donegal, there wasn't a lot of traffic out. And the first ten vehicles uh, that I came across were either Air or K N Networks vans. <laughs> and I was thinking, well, that's that's a sign of the times, yeah. because that's the supply really of communication into any area. And obviously, there were they were under pressure to get maybe Wi-Fi or broadband uh, installed or maintained or fixed for companies where it wasn't working. And that's the you know they were the vehicles, they were the people that were out in the road working, and how important broadband and and all of that is to keep the country you know moving along and keep businesses moving along. And it's um, it's uh, you know it's quite along. interesting. I I am. That out of this, like th- the country hasn't stopped, you know, and you know, th- there is still people working, as you say, it's been a lot of people have been working re- remotely. There will be new things changing, but longer down the road, it could end up in a way that if the companies realize that they don't need to have bigger offices to have all these people in it because these people now will be working from home. It could help our housing problem as well. Very much so, and and very much you know help that demand. We 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 had been working with a company in the financial services area in, in Dublin, and this was before Christmas. And I know I'm not preaching confidence because I won't mention the name of the company, but one one of the big discussions that was coming out, we were working at an internal customer service project. So what we were trying to find out is, okay. The external customer measuring that is one thing, but really what we do first of all is we try and find out, well, you know, how, what are your, are your needs being met in the workplace? And and this is, would be with the employees. And a lot of the, a lot of the feedback was that they felt that they could do their job. This is individual people in certain departments. They felt they could do their job with more home. Uh, working from home. So in other words, instead of coming in five days a week, putting all that pressure on the housing around Dublin, uh, putting the pressure on the transport system coming into the city, could they work three days from home or two days from home? And most of them felt that they could and they could be effective and they could put in disciplines and procedures that would show their efficiencies were just as good, if not better, working from home. And of course, it would save them possibly up to three hours of, tra- you know, traveling time. So that, that conversation had already started, but there's no question that this will, this will focus minds uh, on this, not in the fear that it will come back again, but the fact that, you know, a lot of companies will have worked, you know, very, very effectively through this. And, you know, in spite of the fact that it came on suddenly, well, what if we prepared for this? What if we gradually moved in to people working from further out and feeding in to the companies? Of course, you're always going to have hubs in places like Dublin, you know, Cork and Limerick and Belfast. They're always going to be hubs, and that's that's fine. But, you know, there's, there's, there is this thing. We we rely hugely on, on rural areas in Ireland for other things like tourism and that, and why can people not work from, you know, a well-designed room in the house uh, with proper broadband and, yeah, of course, definitely. You know, training and support online? It's yeah, and you know, and I think that it's it's going to be like it, it's there's going to be a lot of opportunities, and it's like you said there earlier on. You know, there's companies that will close, and maybe it was time for them to. They had run out of steam, and. You know, new entrepreneurs like, you know, a forest fire. I know it's a terrible analogy, but, uh, you know, a forest fire will sweep through a forest and after it's gone, new buds will automatically shoot up. Yeah, yeah. And we, we must we must hold on to hope, hope and, you know, faith. Yeah. It has yeah. to be front and center of, of everything here because we, you know, some people are, are totally overwhelmed by this, you know, and I think you and I, both will know that, that there are some people that just haven't processed it yet. And that's okay because people process things in a, 
in a different way. And then maybe some of us, and I'll include myself, maybe I've accepted this too easily. You know, if they seem to have kicked into auto drive and just sort of. It's, 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 that's because you've been okay preparing for it all your life, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, it's maybe like you're at peace with it. But, and, and, yeah. but it, I think it's because of the powerlessness over it. You know, there's, there's really, we can do something. We can do something to protect ourselves, but there's, there seems to be very little we can do with with, with stopping us apart from. Do you, know, you think it's because we grew up in a time when we didn't have the internet, and you know the only time that you were entertained was if you met your mates or you were bored? You know, is I'm, not sh- I'm not sure. I'm not sure, Joe. Even if it's generational, because it, young people are coping quite well from mm. it as well, and, and we have to be very careful of some of the the reports we're getting and. and Young people getting bad press for some of maybe a small amount of antisocial stuff that's going on or their behaviour on the beach, etc. We need to be very, very careful not to get young people offside with those type of reports. They are small percentages of people. No more than there's a tiny percentage of people, you know, acting uh, inappropriately in, 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 you know, supermarket aisles, etc. Very, very small percentage. It By is correct. Large, correct. Let's be honest. People are very, very decent. They're very respectful. They're keeping their their distances. They're doing all of those things. By and large, and we have to we have to focus on what most people are doing rather than what few people are doing. If those few people are doing that. It's 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 not where the focus should be. You know, let's let maybe I don't know. You know, people process fear in different ways. But yeah, let's, it's, I think there'll be. I, I, like my thoughts on this. Uh, the virus will go, and you know, I I see the virus hopefully disappearing by the end of April. It's mm. I feel the mental pressure and issues and the scarring that it will leave behind with many will go on for months, and that's when the rebuilding needs to be because. You know, it's it's what goes on inside your head is more important than what's going out on outside. Oh yeah, without question. But that, then again, that's that's where you know that's where I think the rules of engagement will also change, mm-hmm. and that we'll see a whole resetting of the financial, you know, the, the financial implications of this. You know, people will lose their business. People will will lose an awful lot of of what they've worked for, and. and you know, all of that will come into play. There's no doubt about it, and they must they must be helped out in whatever way is possible. So that's why I think governments and there seems to be this nearly like a a global acceptance that we we may just have to we may just have to borrow our way out of this or draw the know, line. They talk about helicopter money. We just need to print more money and, and get out of it some way or other. <laughs> How's the uh, print and press down in Dunny up in Dunny Gall? <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Keely bags really has changed from fishing there. to uh, yeah. printing money. <laughs> well, the, fish, the fishing's sort of long gone, but I was I was looking at two manufacturing companies, Willow Needles, which is across the border in Japan. Yeah, I paid off seven hundred and fifty workers last week, and took a lot of them back in to make scrubs for the health workers. Oh, and another small company in Mobile doing the same. So there's lots of great stories. There's great stories. Do you know, uh, Charlie? The, the amount of great stories that we're hearing is unbelievable. You know, and there's there's one thing that someone asked me yesterday. They said, look, everyone's jumping online and everyone's offering free services. And they said, they said to me, he says, D- you know, I can't be offering free services because I need to pay bills and everyone's jumping on. And they were saying, what should I do? And I says, well, look, you, you have to sort of understand, you know, we all offer something of free, but you don't throw the baby in with the bat water when you're throwing it out you know offer those services maybe you might need to just structure things differently but you know everyone has to make money at the end of the day as well yeah that, that is that is very very true and i think you know i think it's um it's, it's just getting that balance right as well but yeah no there's some there's some great examples of you know it mightn't be volunteerism but you know people delay in their retirement or people that have retirement from the health sector coming back to help out and, you know it's, they're not coming back for the love of the wage but they're coming back because they see, feel it's their vocation or their calling and and these are people that aren't they're not going to you know they're going to work with people that are going to be infected by the virus and they have a very high chance because a quarter of the cases in Ireland are health workers you know so you know 
put you, you put yourself in, in, in the shoes of health workers who are going back into work, and and they they have a one in four chance of, of those who catch the virus. Oh, look, our heart so goes out them, to them. You know, and, so it's, that's unbelievable and that's inspirational. The rest of us can't do a simple thing like stay at home or we've been asked to stay at home and you have to ask questions, you know. So, uh, yeah, yeah it, like, it's, you know, we, it's the health workers, it's, you know, the people in the grocery stores, the people in the chemists, it's the people in the petrol stations. You know, that's it, right. It, it, you yeah, know, these are right. these are these are the people that we need now, um, and we we are so grateful for them as well. So grateful. Yeah, very uh, much so, and, and and hopefully that sort of gratitude will will remember us when we come back. You know, yeah. and when when it gets back to normal, uh, whenever that is, you know, early summer, mid summer, and we start getting back to normality and. And hopefully, hopefully the you know the uh, restrictions that have been put into place quite early in Ireland, uh, as opposed to other places, you know that will will that have a positive impact or will it have slowed it down? You know, hopefully it will, and and we may not, you know, be as impacted as the likes of New York seems to be the main focus area now at the minute, simply because there's people always coming into New York from all over the world, and you know. Um, the governor, Governor Cuomo, has been on explaining, you know, why New York is as bad as it is, and and we're, we're not in New York, you know, Ireland is not in New York, so could could we could we uh, maybe avoid a lot of that? Hopefully, we we, we would hope so. But, Plenty uh, of water around us. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's right. Yeah. That's right. So yeah. you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. I think, but I do think, you know, I think the next the next two weeks is is really in many ways going to define. You know how it's going to go. Yeah, questions. definitely, uh, it, it is indeed. Charlie, just um, we're going to just wrap things up. What I want to ask you is, wh- you know, what advice can you give business owners? You know, you're a man of wisdom and knowledge with many, many years of experience, and I know this is all new to ourselves as well. What advice could you give people? It's very hard. It's very hard. I don't feel at all qualified to give any advice other than to pass on the advice that's, that's given to us that is clearly there from from the government. And, you know, when, when we talk with the government, we're not holding any particular parties up here because we must also give respect to those in opposition in the government yeah. who are standing by and allowing that legislation to go through. So credit to all the politicians, not to, not just to those who are governed. But, you know, with the government advice, the HSE advice, the, the World Health Organization advice, just listen to it, abide by that as best we can. That's, that's first and foremost. I think what happens after that is is a follow on, you know, to to that advice. If we if we follow that advice and all the simple stuff like washing our hands, and, you know, that's not me giving advice. That's me just simply reiterating what everybody else is saying. And what happens to business after that, and how we come out of it, you know, treating our staff with kindness, being compassionate. You know, checking on that. You know, if it's a small company, you know how how they are doing. That we're doing everything we possibly can. Uh, if we are paying people off, that we're you know talking to revenue, talking to the Department of Social Protection, make sure that you know the people are getting whatever they have to get, um, and and just doing those simple things with kindness and compassion. And if if we do the right things, the right things will happen. You know, long term. That's, that's my, my belief. Charlie, it's a pleasure having you on. Always love chatting with you. I think it's been a it's been a while since we actually spoke, but um, I'm delighted uh, we connected again. Okay, Joe, and we'll as the saying says, we'll see you on the other side, and we'll we'll be up there to take the the Sam Maguire off off the dust for <laughs> for a twelve month period. No, we're like. just going to pretend that the virus is there forever <laughs> for you. So you. You never leave the county. <laughs> All right. All right, Joe. God bless. God bless. God bless and be safe. Thank you. And that's a wrap, folks. I hope you're all doing well and we will see you next week on Business Eye. Until then, take care and God bless. God bless.